A great tool to help keep cuts straight is a Japanese pole saw and a jig. So we got a jig that would help us guide it here. Let's see, yeah, it's the middle one. And a uh, Japanese pole saw. So this is, for instance, what one of those looks like. And this is good for getting these end pieces off to keep the, the sides that you're cutting on nice and straight so they piece together nice and smooth like. So you put the pole saw in there, see that we got it separated and we just cut our inch off right here at the end and these are great these things keep a nice straight line all right if we're using a bandsaw we want to make sure that we already have it measured halfway down the middle here so we have a straight line that we're going to cut because we're going to cut this completely in half so remember we can get two picks out of this one out of each half and so we also want to remember that the side um this side right here is the one with all the features that we're going to want on the side of our pick showing. So we're going to make sure that's on the side and not on the top here. Then of course, you want to make sure you have your stick to push it with. Be careful. Turn it on. There's our two halves now, it's cut. Now we can do cut this half and half once again to make two sides, or we can go down the center and make one of these into a half tang. I think that's what I might do with this one. Okay, so each pin blank can make about two and a quarter picks. I say that because pin blanks are usually this length, the length of the acrylic, but this wood and all of them in general I cut off about an inch or an inch and a half of each one, that way the pick is not too long. As you can see this one, it's about that length, it's perfect length. And um, that end that you cut off, like all of these, you can piece them together, glue them together to make a pick like this. <clears throat> so when you're cutting these, you want to see what features you want on the sides of your pick, sticking out, showing the most, so you, want, you don't want the features on the top and bottom. I want this marbling on the outside, so I'm going to put this in the vise this way. And we can cut this into four pieces that are like this. And so when we start, I want to cut this in half first to make sure I get two perfect halves. I'm going to put a mark on that end at that perfect halfway point. And then a mark on this end with that perfect halfway point then after that you just connect the two points and start sawing and also don't forget when you're sawing always wear your mask a lot of this um, a lot of these woods are toxic I don't know how well you can see it but my cut is starting to go off to the right here a little bit so it's going off to an angle and we don't want that so what you do is you put your blade in here at the right the correct angle and just rest it in there that way when it goes in it starts at the top of the angle where the angle starts going off and then you just drag your blade you don't add any pressure and it'll start getting that angle it'll start from the top of where that angle starts and it'll slowly cut down into a straight line again when you get down to the last bit of the pick and there are last bit of wood and there's only a little bit more to cut there you want to unclamp it Clamp it just at the bottom of the wood where there's that little bit left to cut. Reason being is we don't want the clamp pushing this together like that because then we can't get our saw blade down in there. And at the end here, you don't really want to use a lot of force. You just want to let the saw blade's weight do the work because we don't want this to splinter on the inside at all because when we glue this together, we want a very flat uh, uh, middle in there. That way they, can, they fit together perfectly with no uh, bumps and uh, splinters. So here we go, just finish cutting this. Finish done. There we go. Let's see, I'm gonna unscrew it. There we go, okay. There we go, finished off. And we can see how very flat and smooth both sides are. So they will fit back together perfectly. 
Next, we want to do the design on our pick. So with a full tang, we want to do the design first, draw it on, then we want to tape it right here to keep these two halves from moving. The next thing we want to do is do the pins next to keep the two halves from moving even more, and then we want to cut it around the sides here. The reason why we wanted to cut it around the sides here is because when we put our pick metal in right there, we don't want to be grinding down wood near the metal. That will give us a chance to screw it up. So what we want to do is cut it all down and then smooth those up as much as possible to prepare for our, our metal. And for our half tang, we want to do the design first, then we want to do the pins next, and then the half tang. The reason being is for our design, we cut that out first, and once it's done, we can see that, make sure that our pin holes are perfectly centered, so that allows us to make sure that our holes are centered. Then we do our holes next, and the reason being, the holes first, because you don't want to do the half tang first. If you do the half tang first, you have this open hole right here in the center like you see in this full tang one. And when you try to do the pins, when you're pushing on it with the drill, these two halves will come pushed together like that. And it'll throw off the drill bit and screw it up just a little bit and it won't go quite as straight. So that's the order that you want to do things in. And for templates here, these are made from pick metal that I use for my picks. I draw out the design, I grind them out in the metal, then I just place them on my pick the way I want them to, and copy it over. And it makes it quick, reproducible, and a template that's not easily destroyed. Now that we got the overall shape, we want to drill the holes. This is for the half ting pick, that's our next step. For the full ting pick, before we get drilling, if you want to drill the holes for the full thing and you're doing it by hand, if you're doing it by drill press, you do it the same way here. Once it's all taped up right here, once it's all taped, then you drill it. That's before shaping it. But if you have to drill it by hand, you have to use a cordless drill and you're doing a full thing pick, separate the two halves, drill it from the inside of the pick, the part that will be glued out. That way in case you're um, your bit travels a little bit or creates too big of a hole, it's on the inside of it and not the outside and it'll keep it looking nice on the outside. For our half tame pick, we already got it marked, so I'm going to go ahead and drill them. We're using a drill press, so we want to push it down, let's see actually here, change my hand position, we're going to go down and make sure it's on it first. And a little bit more on the plate and the size of drill bit I'm using is a 3 and 32 inch final one looks like the hole is centered like we want it to be so let's get it down make sure it's on it in the right spot turn it on and there we go there are our two holes for our pins. Next, we will cut the tang, or the half tang here. If you want to test the holes for the pins, go ahead and uh, do it now to make sure that your pins fit in there. If they fit a little too tight, what you can do is just take this again, or take your drill bit again, and just, you know, kind of, you know, turn it on and, and push it in and out of the hole a little bit, and then I'll give it a little bit extra room. Anyway, so next, let's cut the slot for the half tang. So next, we want to cut out the shape of the pick. So we have it drawn on already. This is a half tang pick, so that's the next step for this one. Our full tang pick, what we would do is we would 
have it already cut in half, taped, we have it pinned, the tape and pins to help hold the two sides together so they don't move while we are cutting or grinding them. Then we'd cut the top off and cut the, the both sides of the tape where we can or grind them. And then you can either move the tape to finish the other sides or you can just wait till it's done glued at the end and then cut the remaining off or grind it off. In which that case, the last little bit closest to the pick is best used for a for a belt sandy, sander or a grinder. Reason being is in case you hit that metal. But we're doing a half tang with this one. So band saw it is. <laughs> And there we go. There's our shape. So next we want to put the dots on it. Since um, the shape is made, we can be more certain of where to place the dots for our pins on this. So you can see I already kind of drawn one on. And it looks okay, but I think I'm going to push it back just a little bit more now. So I'm going to put a dot for a pin about right there. Yeah, probably just expand a little bit more, push back just a little bit, and then The idea too, you want to give enough space to put whatever clamp you're putting on here between the two pins that we can clamp it on nicely. And let's see, let's put it down that way. Right there. So right there. And that will be sort of the marking part of our half tang, which so we wanted a little bit that up we want the half tang to end a little bit behind this last pin here it's probably going to do it right there so i'm going to mark it on the top just to kind of get it started that'll be my dot to mark it on the top and then what i'll do next is i'll make a straight line there and then i will mark it straight down the center here to mark my cut line for the half tang there but that'll be after I drill these pins. Now for cutting the half tang. We see that I have the line on it already. Here's the stopping point where we'll stop, which is not too far behind our hole here of our uh, last pin. And we will use a Japanese, Japanese saw. These are nice, Thin, very fine cutting saws just you can see how thin that is right there very thin it is um, get our calipers here it is about point th three uh, 0.3 millimeters and our 19 thousandths metal that we'll be using is focus on the words there there we go it is 0.483 millimeters so our metal is a little bit thicker which is okay though so after we cut it we can put a piece of sandpaper in there and kind of file it down to get that perfect snug fit the reason we don't want to use a hacksaw is because it's very thick so see right there about 0.7 millimeters so it's very thick um, it might work for uh, 25 thousandths of a pick but I'm not sure I haven't tried it yet another thing you could do instead of using this Japanese saw is if you measure your if you have a band saw measure your blade to, uh, thickness and it might be perfect for using this and you could guarantee you'll keep it straight but for this one we'll use the Japanese saw and what we'll do is We'll just start guiding it along our line here. Just start cutting. 
And we'll start rocking it, bringing it back and forth a little bit. Do all the little bit of the line at once. Oh, there we go. Here, just this some more. So we got the front of it a little bit. There we go. And we're gonna get the top of it some. What you want to do is while you're doing this, keep dragging it around the other parts of the line. Try not to stay in one area too long. That way you keep it nice and even there. And see, I can't go too far either right now because of that curve, so I don't want to cut other, other things too, but that'll be all right. So by the time we get to this area down here, we'll have a pretty good straight line going. Go. Feels like we've got some good distance in the wood right here. So what we'll do is see me to do the front of it. Because then next we'll have to flip it over and do the bottom. So that's what what you do. You just keep going around each part right here. Make sure you're connecting to the front cut. And follow that line straight up, straight around there. And see how I'm kind of lifting it up and going back over the line where I was to keep it all connecting and flowing there. And then next, I'm going to undo it. Flip it over. And keep doing the same thing on this side. And what you'll do is you'll keep going around to get a good cut. And I'll cut and I'll come back when I'm almost done. Okay, so now I got it cut all the way around. And a tip for if when you want to sand it in the middle there to make it just a little bit wider to make your pick fit just right. Take your vise right here, have it open, lay your sandpaper over it, put your fingers on both sides to stiffen the sandpaper. And then, there you go, just like that. Mine's good to go though. And another tip too, if you got some like bendiness in there, some waviness, just cut a thinner piece right here, stick it through, and handle that one area. So here's our metal. Fits right in, nice and snug now. So that'll be good, that'll hold solid and um, one thing too, this piece of metal is three-fourths of an inch, so it's not exactly that wide going this way. So you can see at the top here, it doesn't quite stick out the top of my pick, which, eh, that'll be alright. I'm going to go back, I'm going to trim this nub off right here, make it more round so that's more flush right there. And at the top here, I might trim it down just a little bit, because as you can see, this hole's a little bit low, so I might just trim it down a little bit more to make that even. So. It might line up. We'll see. Either way, metal's perfect shape. There we go.